Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to test this Commodore 64 that comes straight from my collection. I really hope it works since it's the first time I've taken it out of the box. So I don't know if it functions or what issues it might have. So let's give it a try. I really hope it works as it's the first time I've taken it out of the box. Fortunately it powers on and the initial screen seems to have no issues so it looks promising. Unfortunately, the keys don't seem to cooperate. I've tried them one by one, but they show no sign of life. At this point, I completely disassemble it, which also allows me to give it a good clean. The fact that it has already been opened, as evident from the band cover, is not a good sign. Someone has definitely opened this Commodore before. The problem is likely caused by the CIA, since it controls most of the input-output processes. Unfortunately, without an oscilloscope, I don't have the opportunity to verify if it works, but oscilloscopes are quite expensive, so I search online and find one within my budget for 20 euros with excellent reviews, so I decided to give it a try. The package comes with everything you need to build an oscilloscope, including instructions. Inside, there are many components to solder, a B and C connector with alligator clips, an LCD display, and the main circuit. I separated all the components and started soldering. Unfortunately, the tip I'm using is not the best for this type of soldering, but I don't have any other option at the moment. I used the provided schematic to figure out which resistor belonged to which pad, which took me almost an afternoon. I later found a more detailed schematic that would have saved me all this work. After soldering the resistors, I soldered the inductors, diodes, crystal, the USB port, switches, capacitors, LED, transistors, regulators, trimmers, power connector, various pins, and the switches. After an entire afternoon of soldering, I managed to finish it. I shorted JP3 and now I can test the voltage, which should be around 3.3 volts. After having shorted JP4, I connected the display and turned it on an oscilloscope for the first time. It's indeed a small oscilloscope, but it's certainly suitable for hobbyists and for the purpose I will be using it, especially considering the price at which it was sold. On the sides, there are switches for coupling modes and the sensitivity. The two bottom regulators lower the voltages in 10 mV intervals, and these can be multiplied up to 5 times. With these four switches, I can adjust the settings, while the fifth one at the bottom is for resetting them. With this button, I can choose what to adjust. The currently selected one is highlighted in blue. With these two buttons, I adjust the parameters, and the top button is used to set the new settings. You can also switch between auto and normal mode. I also noticed later that the coupling selection is displayed on the screen. To, to set up the oscilloscope, I had to adjust the streamers. With alligator clips, I wouldn't be able to make measurements, so I bought this probe, although the ground is much more shorter than it seems, so I extended it with a clip and a wire, connected to another ground point. At this point, I can check the CIA, but to test if the oscilloscope works, I also going to check other components. All the information needed to understand what the correct output should be, I took them from the book mentioned below in the description. I start with the CPU. Pin 6 should be the power supply voltage, so 5 volts, and that's exactly what it shows. 
Pin 1 is the clock signal generated by the VIC2. Pin 40 is the reset pin, and it should remain low for a moment when turned on, and then go to high. Pin 39 is the clock generated by the TPU and should be 1 MHz. I move on to check the seed, although it's highly unlikely that the problem is caused by this. Pin 28 should be 9 volts in the 8580. Pin 27 is the audio output, and pin 25 should be 5 volts. The pins are probably a bit oxidated since I have to press quite hard before getting a signal. Finally, I move on to the CIA, starting with the pin 1, which should be ground. Pin 19 is the time of day clock, and I'm not sure this is the correct output. I have to press really hard, otherwise I have no output. Pin 20 should be 5 volts, but again, unless I press really hard, it doesn't show any signal. I'm also going to check pin 23, which is the chip select, and this seems to have fewer problems. The outputs were correct, but I have a feeling that the pins are very oxidized, so I will desolder and resolder them. I apply flux to make it easier to desolder and use the braid to absorb the solder. I'm going to resolder the CIA. I'm not sure what this tape is for, but at this point I will give it a good clean with contact cleaner. I reassemble it and check again with the oscilloscope to see if the connection seems less oxidized. Indeed, now I can see the output on the screen as soon as I touch the probe. Fortunately, that was the only problem, as I wouldn't have a spare CIA on hand to replace it. At this point, I go back to testing the keyboard, hoping that it will work and that it's just an oxidation problem. All the keys work, and later I verified that each one worked individually, and there was no issue. So, after an intense soldering session, I was able to build an oscilloscope and get the Commodore up and running. With the help of the new oscilloscope, I was able to identify and fix the problem, even if it was just related to some oxidation. Nevertheless, it was an interesting experience. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment. See you on the next video!